Okay, guys, we're at a part of the lesson where we want to find the pressure at a point. Okay, now many of you who study physics would know that the pressure is the force per unit area of a certain plane. Okay, for example, it acts as a normal to the plane. So if you've got a plane like that, okay, the pressure is, is basically at the normal to the plane. Or if you want, you can make a perpendicular like that. Okay, so that's pressure at a point for a certain plane. But we know in fluid mechanics that in a fluid, we want to find that as the plane changes, okay, that means if we can locate a point in the fluid, we want to know what's the difference in the pressure at that certain point depending on the plane that we choose, okay? So if you got a, a water over here, okay, and we select a point, the, the point is over here, the point in the water, right? So there are a lot of planes that we can generate, especially in the three-dimensional space. For example, one is like that, so the pressure is normal to the plane. Another one could be like that, the pressure is like this. So there are a lot of planes we can think of in the fluid, and therefore we want to know the different pressures that are acting on that point. Or are they different? Okay, that's the, that's the key here, okay, in fluid mechanics, so we're going to find that out. Okay, so we're concerned with a pressure at a point, okay, and the pressure at a point as the plane or the, the pressure changes as the plane changes. So, here is our axis in the liquid and we will define a certain wedge shape, okay? Now, the wedge shape that we will define goes like that. So, we are in the fluid and the wedge shape is like this, okay? If I can draw it correctly, yeah, okay. So, imagine that we are in the fluid and that's the wedge, wedge shape and we will label, label this angle theta right here, okay? So, the angle is arbitrary, meaning to say that the wedge can take any shape. This is, this is a wedge in the, in the liquid and the plane can take any shape. So, as we know that on this wedge shape in the liquid, there are three forces that are acting, that are acting on it. We label them down here, which is the force to the surface. Okay, this is called, let's just call this S, S is the, the surface. Okay, there's another force acting here, okay, force Z, okay, which is in direction of the Z, Z axis, okay, and there's another force here, which we'll call force Y, okay, which is in the direction of the Y axis, okay. Now, so that's the idea, that's the idea over here. As we change the angle theta, this surface will change, okay, and all the forces that are acting on it, we label them as FS, FZ, and FY. Now, the solution to this problem is to see whether FS, FY, and FZ varies for the certain wedge shape in the liquid. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Because, as you can see, these are different planes in which the forces are acting. So we want to find how are these three forces related together. Okay, so that's the objective. Okay, and we'll just do some labeling. Okay, now, you might be asking that how come I did not include the, the x-axis? Well, it's just for simplicity of the analysis. If you want a full analysis, you need to make the, the force due to the x-axis going in this direction. But we'll ignore that for now, okay? So let's just label some dimensions, okay? This will be a change in x, this will be a change in y, okay? y-axis change in, oh, sorry, change, yeah, change in y is over here. And this will be a change in z, okay? And lastly, we would uh, label this surface here, okay, a change in s, okay? Or maybe it's called the slant leg. Okay, so that is what we have. Now, on top of that, the wedge shape has a certain mass, or it's a certain weight, okay? And that weight, as we all know, acts vertically down, like that, like this, like here, like so, okay? And now, we can start labeling the forces, okay? Now, what is the specific, what is the weight of this wedge shape? Well, the weight is simply the volume of the wedge shape, which in this case would be delta y, delta x, delta z, divided by 2, because it's triangular in shape, times by the specific weight. Now recall what is specific weight. Specific weight is the density times the gravity. So it's basically, when we have a certain volume, what is the gravity that pulls the shape down? Okay, so that is the, the weight of the wedge shape. Now, using normal de uh, definition of the force per, per pressure, okay, the force would be equal to the pressure at that point, or the pressure acting in that plane, in this case, we'll just label pressure Z. Multiplied by the area, correct? Now, what's the area? The area is the change in X times the change in Y, or delta X, delta Y, okay? So, I repeat again, using the normal equation of the force from pressure, okay? Which is our pressure times area. So, the pressure here, we'll label it as pressure Z. We don't know whether the pressure, that is pressure Z is the same as the pressure Y yet, but doesn't matter. Let's just label it as pressure Z times by the area, which is change in X times change in Y. We'll do the same for the other 
the other forces acting on the other planes, okay? So the pressure at y, okay? Y pressure at y because again it's acting in the y direction multiplied by the area in this case would be a change in x and a change in z or delta x delta z. And lastly for this one it would be the pressure s or the pressure acting along the, the wedge surface, okay? Multiplied by the area again. So there would be a change in x and a change in s. So there we go. Lastly, we want to resolve this force over here in the in the x and y. Oh, sorry, the z and the y direction for analysis. Okay, and if we recognize, um, you should be able to. Um, this angle theta over here corresponds to this angle theta over here. Okay, and now we can resolve the two forces like so. Okay, so what is the next step? The next step is that now we are going to apply Newton's second law to analyze this wedge shape. Recall again, the wedge shape is in the liquid, okay, so we're going to analyze the wedge shape. Newton's second law goes, the resultant force is equal to m uh, times a, the mass times a, okay, the mass of the wedge shape, let's just label it as m because, you know, it's the same throughout. Okay, now we assume that there is no shearing stress. I repeat again, we assume that there's no shearing stress. Why? Because this is a small wedge shape in the liquid, right? So the liquid will move as a rigid body through the, the entire tunnel. So if we analyze this wedge shape, the particle or this wedge shape does not cause a shearing stress with uh, the adjacent particles around it because they're all moving in a single body, okay? So that's the assumption that we'll make. There's no shearing stress. However, there can be acceleration, accelerated motion because the, the, the whole liquid, the whole fluid can move with accelerated motion. So we'll just label it as a um, acceleration. So we take account into the accelerated motion, okay? So resolving Newton's, uh, using Newton's second law in the y direction, okay? So Newton's second law applied in the y direction, taking this direction as positive, okay? We would have, okay, this one over here, so we got the pressure at y multiplied by d, uh, delta x delta z, okay? These two are vertical, right? So we forget about that. We can minus, okay, because this travels in this direction, the pressure, okay, of the surface, delta x, delta s, or shall I say, the force generated on the surface multiplied by a sine theta, okay? I hope we can see that. Sine theta because we are resolving in this direction, yeah? So we are going backwards in this direction over here. This force is this, com this um, component the, the, the horizontal component of this force over here, okay? And that is equal to the mass of the wedge shape, which we can just call as M, okay? Multiplied by the accelerated motion in the Y direction, A, Y, okay? I hope you can see that, okay? Now, now we resolve in the Z direction, okay? Taking upwards as positive, okay? The Z direction has a bit, a few more components, but we can still do it. Okay, the force generated by the, the pressure acting on the upward direction, which is the force acting on the, the Z plane is equal to that. So with the pressure at Z, delta X, delta Y, okay, minus the, the, the vertical component of this force right here, the force acting on the surface, which is the pressure at S uh, multiplied by delta X, delta S, okay, times by a certain cosine theta, Okay, I hope you can see that because we, are, we want to take this component. This com the horizontal component is already satisfied here. So we take the vertical component now, okay? On top of that, we need to minus the weight of the red shape, okay? Because the weight is also acting down. We need to take into account that, which is the specific weight times the volume, which is delta y, delta x, delta z divided by s, okay? And that is equal to the, ma the mass multiplied by the acceleration along the z-axis, okay? So we got these two equations over here. Now, at this point, we have still suggest, or we still leave open the possibility that the pressure at S, the pressure at Z, and the pressure at Y are all different, okay? See, that's what we want to find out. We want to find a relationship between all the pressures. So we can just leave it as they, they might be different. So we will do the appropriate calculations, okay? So now, um, the next step is to use some geometry and recognize that we can switch the, the cosine theta and the, the, cos, the sine theta. Okay, how do I do that? Well, we will use this triangle over here, okay? So, as we can see, sine, okay, I'll write it here, okay? We can see that using the, the, the delta S, the theta, the, the delta Y, and the delta Z, we can see that delta S cosine theta is equal to change in Y, okay? And delta S sine theta is equal to the change in Z, okay? So yeah, we're just basically using geometry to eliminate the trigonometry function.